Good morning. Oh, Dr. Robinson, you're here. I was getting worried you were too busy for breakfast. Ah, sorry I'm late. I had to run 20 drug tests this morning. God, I hate football season. Although I did get to meet the number one ball handler in Miami. Dan Marino? No, Nurse Stiggs. Glad you made it. I wouldn't miss it. You're very special to me, Julie. I like you, too. How about this table? Not close enough to the emergency exit. Ah, good eye. How about the one we had yesterday? It's not under any ceiling fixtures that could fall on us, and it's line of sight to the Heimlich chart. Perfect. <laughs> to your help. What have you heard? <laughs> kick some butt in the supply department. I mean, when you look at this, two weeks ago I ordered some rectal thermometers. Look what they sent me. Ouch. That's what Mr. Kresge in 304 said. <laughs> Listen, if you're free this afternoon, let's go down to supply and show those guys why these won't work. <laughs> Sorry I'm late, everybody, but I'm lucky to be here at all. Annie, what happened? Well, last night, Fred and I were driving home from a PTA meeting behind one of those big rig trucks. You know, the kind that speed along and change lanes without looking. And have those shiny, silver, big-breasted women on the mud flats? We almost died. Yeah, there's something. Well, anyhow, Fred lost control of the car, and we ended up doing a rollover into an embankment. Good Lord, the truck cut you off? No, Fred was looking at those mud flaps. Well, I'm just glad you're all right. Me too, but it got us to thinking. Life is so fragile. If Fred and I were to die, who would take care of the kids? Annie, don't say that. Honey, that was a rhetorical question. You'll be taking care of the kids. <laughs> what are you talking about? I thought you named your sister guardian. I did, but Brenda and her husband are getting transferred to California. My folks are getting on in years, and my other sister, Claudia, is getting it on with anything wearing pants. <laughs> really? You know, I gotta start wearing those when I go out. Annie, look, there's another thing. I mean, in case you hadn't thought about it, your kids are, well, black. <gasps> they are. Then you know what I mean. They need to know who they are and where they came from. How are they going to deal with being brought up by a mother who's white? I still have the scars. <laughs> oh, Annie, I don't know if I could raise three kids. I mean, I've never even babysat. Okay, I'll tell you what, we'll break you in slowly. Try one kid for one night. Zach can come over and spend Saturday night with you. Oh, I don't know. Oh, you'll be fine. Don't worry. Okay, you're on. Call me mommy. I'd pay to. <laughs> Just looking at the bulletin board downstairs, guess who's loose? I heard. Annie's sister. <laughs> no, Jim the crazy guy. It's no big deal. He always wanders off. I always find him, bring him back. Greg would be much more of a challenge. <laughs> Let me take Greg to psych. Paco, you could never do that without the signatures of three doctors. Give me half an hour. <laughs> Thanks, Carrie. I'll, I'll let you know tomorrow. You're sweet for calling. No, you're sweet. No, you are. No, you are. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> Julie. I'm sorry. It's my friend Carrie. She's having another dinner party and she wants to know if I'm bringing anyone. She knows I'm not bringing anyone. She's just calling to rub it in. Oh, I hate that. 
people who are supposedly your friends, assuming you're alone, assuming you could never in a million years find someone to bring. Hey, maybe I will bring someone. You? Oh, please, who? His name is Dr. Robinson. He's handsome and intelligent. I met him in the medical library. He offered me a lifesaver. And as I took it from his tweezers, I knew he was the man for me. <laughs> well, if Dr. Robinson sounds perfect, why don't you ask him to the dinner party? Oh, Gina, girls just don't do that. Oh, please, these are the 90s. You can do it, Julie. It's in your power. Do you really think so? Yes. Today, women are free. Women are equal. Excuse me, Gina. Oh, excuse me, it's my lord and master. <laughs> And here, and right here. Congratulations, Sandy. If anything happens to me, you are the mother of three children. Wow, and I didn't even get stretch marks. <laughs> or the special joy of sleeping with Fred. Speaking of Fred, what if just you die? Do I get Fred? Honey, you can have him now. <laughs> Same. Oh, you bet. Uh, excuse me, is that eclair the only thing you're gonna have for lunch? No, it's dessert. I had a good lunch. What'd you have? Something called cheese pals. <laughs> excuse me, but is this the kind of food that you would serve others in your home? Like, uh, I don't know, say, uh, your three adopted godchildren? <laughs> Frankly, I think they'll be thankful for anything they get. Chained to the water heater down in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I guess I had that coming. Fact is, Fred and I are thrilled that you're agreeing to do this. And we both know that you're going to be a great mother. Damn right I will. Uh, excuse me, did I just hear you use the D word? <laughs> well, what the hell is a D word? <laughs> excuse me, are you going to talk like that around my kids? Excuse me, is this the lady who told me the joke about the shepherd, the monkey, and the bag full of hair? <laughs> no, wait, Sandy, it's just that I'm noticing some patterns that concern me. Bad eating habits, indiscriminate language, and a tendency to use a little too much makeup. You think I wear too much makeup? Well, let's just say you're not going to burn up on re-entry. <laughs> so what you're saying here is you think I'm a bad example. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. Honey, you're slouching. Oh. No, Sandy, I Now, just... listen, Annie, I'm not going to stand here and be on trial. If you want me to be godmother to your kids, fine. If not, just say so. And so the monkey says to the shepherd, if it's not yours, then whose hair is it? Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Robinson, I have something to ask you, and it's a little difficult for me. Feel free to say no. My friend Carrie's having a dinner party Saturday night. I'm inviting you. But you can't go. I understand. I'm sorry I asked. Can I go now? You want me to go to a dinner party with you Saturday night? Yes. Julie, I'd love to. I understand. <laughs> you would? Yes. If I can, I just have to check my calendar to see if I'm free. Can I let you know later? Of course. <laughs> Take all the time you need. Take a week. But the party's this Saturday. Oh, yes, but that's not important. The important thing is I asked you out on a date and you gave me a fur maybe. <laughs> until you check and see who's at the door. You're right. Stay out. Listen, I hope I'm not catching you at a bad time. You certainly weren't cleaning. Annie, what is this? Do you just single me out for criticism or are you going door to door? I came to apologize. But there's a reason I've been on your case. It's tough for me to think about leaving my babies with someone else after I've gone. Especially someone who apparently doesn't own a mop. I mean, would it kill you to break out a dust buster once in a while? This is the worst apology I've ever heard. No, no, I'm sorry, Sandy. Okay, I admit that I've been going a little crazy lately, and I had some serious second thoughts, and... Sandy, the uh, water's getting cold. And my second thoughts have just been confirmed. Annie, now, wait, it's not what you think. It's not what you think. Paco, psychiatric call. Jim, the crazy guy didn't show up for his medication today. Yeah, yeah, I'll find him. Good morning, ladies. Mr. Lombardi in 318 is calling for Dr. Bristol. Oh, I believe he's calling me. 
What are you talking about, Gina? I'm Dr. Riskin. I know there's probably some wishful thinking here, but being Dr. Riskin isn't all glitter and glamour. It's just that Mr. Lombardi is constantly mistaking me for you. Really? It's the breast. Hey, get this. Mr. Lombardi in 318 just called me Dr. Riskin. I hate you all. Dr. Riskin. Yes. Can you help me out at noon? I got a difficult subclavian schedule for Mr. Lewis. Sure, Hank. But we may have a bigger problem than that. You see what I see? I will meal Julie's kissing a doctor. I've never seen her kiss a man, much less a doctor. You still haven't. Julie's kissing Jim the crazy guy. kissing Jim, the crazy guy? I wonder if he was a good kisser. Would you just get laid and leave it alone? <laughs> this is horrible, y'all. What are we gonna do? I don't know, and she already made plans to go to a dinner party with him. <sighs> no problem. We'll just get him a dinner jacket that buckles in the back. <laughs> they have those. I'm aware of that, Greg. Don't make me put you in one. Oh, yeah? Well, Dr. Riskin, don't make me shapeshift. Shapeshift? Change from my form into the form of any other plant or animal. Deal. Now, what are we going to do about Julie? Oh, she's finally in a relationship, and the guy turns out to be a mental patient. Look, we can't keep this a secret. Somebody has to tell Julie. Tell Julie what? That Greg has the ability to shapeshift. Change from my form into the form of any other plant or animal. And this is what you chose? Well, now listen, Annie, I have got something to say to you. Don't come to my house, see one man in a robe, and make snap judgments about what kind of parent I'll be. I'm not judging you, obviously. I'm the one with the bad judgment. Annie, listen to you. We've been friends most of our lives, and I am the exact same person as when we met. Now, come on, people don't just change overnight. They do if they shapeshift. <laughs> Sometimes in the blink of an eye. Come on, Annie, we had a deal. Just give me Zach for one night, and we'll both feel better about this whole thing. Well, my only concern Annie, is... Annie, I'm your best friend, and you're getting dangerously close to hurting my feelings. You're right, I'm sorry. Thank you. Now... What is all this loopy business Greg's cooked up about being able to change into the shape of any plant or... <laughs> Greg? Was that there before? Yeah, I just saw Jim the crazy guy. He's giving a lecture on medical ethics in recessionary times. <laughs> and you didn't stop him? He was giving it to the water fountain. <laughs> in love with a crazy guy and what kind of friends are we to have not told her we're really crummy friends we have to tell julie before that sweet girl loses any shred of dignity she might have left after open mouth kissing a wacko <laughs> so tell her tell me what gina sandy annie gina sandy anybody want to make 20 bucks <laughs> what a bunch of weenies Julie, let's talk for a second about your new boyfriend. Have you ever noticed you never hear anybody call out the name Dr. Robinson on the PA system? Have you ever noticed he's always wearing slippers? Have you ever noticed his beeper is made by Fisher Price? What are you getting at? You're dating a nut. What? Julie, your boyfriend is Jim the crazy guy. Dr. Robinson? Dr. Robinson isn't... Dr. Robinson? Is this true? Honey, it's true. We didn't have a heart to tell you, Julie. I'm sorry, Julie. Oh, my God. Is he dangerous? No. He's actually a wonderful man who checks himself into the psych ward about twice a year. Nothing to be ashamed of. There are some people who just can't deal with reality. I just want to curl up into a little ball and be shot into space. <laughs> Hi, Dios mío. 
Greg? Yeah? Spooky, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. I don't want to call Annie, but I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Am I supposed to read him a story? But... Oh, my God. I've lost him again. Hold on. Zach? Zach, where are you? Zach, what are you doing with my meatball? Watching them film. <laughs> now, you know you are not supposed to play with your... Whoa, good hop. Give me one of them babies. <laughs> what am I doing? What am I doing? Now, look at you. You're a mess again. Go in there and wash up. Oh, this is not a very good time to talk. Uh-uh. He wants to watch something called Migrant Lactating Puberty Turtles or some damn thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, I agree with you. I don't think anybody should have kids. Okay, Mom, talk to you later. Hey, Aunt Sandy, what's this? I've heard a great deal of strawberry jelly, but I never heard of... Hey, um, it's, uh... Okay, uh... Kiwi jelly. <laughs> Now go sit at the table and eat your dinner. Hello? This is Zach. Who is this? A boyfriend? Hey, are you going to ask her to marry you or what? Hello? Hello? Who is that? Some boyfriend. But don't worry, I don't think he'll be bothering you anymore. Zach, your dinner's getting cold. I hate spaghetti. Well, I don't mind if you hate it, just as long as you eat it. Well, I like get if I eat it. You get full. What else do you want? I want to do my magic trick. What magic trick? This one. <laughs> That's not the best magic trick I've ever seen. Hey, what do you want? I'm six. <laughs> knock, knock. Hi, Mom. Want some spaghetti? Annie, what are you doing here? Are you spying on me? Yeah. Oh, thank God. Zach, are you being naughty for Aunt Sandy? Oh, no, Annie. It's not him. It's me. I just don't think I get it. I got him to eat his vegetables, but only half of them. And I get him into the tub, but he won't wash his hair. There is one silver lining, though. We found out my smoke detectors work. <laughs> he ate vegetables? Lima beans! He never eats vegetables, and he never wants to take a bath. So oh, wait a minute. This means you're actually being good for me. Surprise! <laughs> I can get so good for her and not the babysitters. Because I don't love the babysitters. Oh. Zach, you know what you are, honey. You are the slipperiest little con man I ever saw. Thanks. <laughs> so it looks like you and Zach are okay then, huh? Yeah, but how are you and I? Well, Sandy, I don't know about you, but I'm a little ashamed of the way I've been treating you for the past few days. Yeah, well, I'm a little ashamed of the way you've been treating me, too. <laughs> I'm sorry I ever doubted you, and I would be honored to have you care for the children if anything, well, you know, happened. Well, the honor would be mine, too. However, should you and Fred travel, you will be taking separate planes. <laughs> Zach, grab your coat. I'm treating everybody to ice cream. Yeah! If that's okay with Mom. Well, sure. After all he did eat his vegetables. Oh. What's the matter, Sandy? Oh, I've got something in my shoe, and unless I'm wrong, it feels exactly like a child's portion of lima beans. <laughs> that's right. I've been waiting for you. I know. I had to sit and think a while before I came here. I have something to tell you. Okay. Dr. Robinson, I can't take you to my friend Carrie's party. Why not? Because you're not allowed out of the hospital. Why not? Because, you see, you're Jim the crazy guy. I see. So what you're saying is, I'm Jim the crazy guy. You didn't know? No, this is the first I've heard of it. I've been Dr. Robinson for a couple of years now. Oh, who were you before that? Olympia Dukakis. Steel Magnolias, what a cast. Ah, we had the best time. So? So, I'm Jim the crazy guy. Yes. And you're Julie. Right. How do you know? Well, 
my God. I mean... Exactly. How do any of us know? Well, but on my birth certificate, it says Julie Milbury. On mine, it says Stephen Sanborn. Who's that? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm sorry about the party. Oh, that's okay. You'll be here, and based on the information you've given me, so will I. There's my beeper. Well, I'd better go. Okay. Okay. Will I see you, Julie Milbury? Well, yes. Yes. How about breakfast tomorrow? Maybe we'll live it up. We'll have some whole milk on our oatmeal. Hey, Julie Milbury. Who's the crazy one now? Hey, you're looking much better. <laughs> hey, good morning. How's it going? Great. I tell you, you have made quite an impression on Zach. He's done nothing but talk about you for three days. Oh, I had a great time, too. Oh, by the way, what gourmet shop do you go to? Why? Well, Zach keeps insisting on trying a uh, peanut butter and kiwi jelly sandwich, and I don't know what about the stuff. I'll make some. Hi, how are you doing? Oh, I don't know. I'm going to miss Dr. Robinson. Why are all the really clean people insane? <laughs> you know, there was nothing crazy about him seeing something special in you. You'll find somebody else. There are a lot of fish in the sea, right? You want fish? Give me three minutes, I'm a flounder. <laughs> All right, there are six foot radius and fill a tub. You'll notice that my eyes begin to shift to the sides of my head. Do not be alarmed by the sudden pungent odor. Some of you in the front row may get wet. <laughs> So the monkey says to the shepherd, if it's not yours, then whose hair is it? <laughs> Dr. Robinson, I have something to ask you, and it's a little difficult for me. Feel free to say no. My friend Carrie's having a dinner party Saturday night. I'm inviting you. But you can't go. I understand. I'm sorry I asked. Can I go now? You want me to go to a dinner party with you Saturday night? Yes. Julie, I'd love to. I understand. <laughs> you would? Yes. If I can, I just have to check my calendar to see if I'm free. Can I let you know later? Of course. Take all the time you need. Take a week. But the party's this Saturday. Oh, yes, but that's not important. The important thing is I asked you out on a date and you gave me a fur maybe. <laughs> until you check and see who's at the door. You're right. Stay out. Listen, I hope I'm not catching you at a bad time. You certainly weren't cleaning. Annie, what is this? Do you just single me out for criticism or are you going door to door? I came to apologize. But there's a reason I've been on your case. It's tough for me to think about leaving my babies with someone else after I've gone. Especially someone who apparently doesn't own a mop. I mean, would it kill you to break out a dustbuster once in a while? This is the worst apology I've ever heard. No, no, I'm sorry, Sandy. Dr. Callahan, Dr. Callahan. Hank, come here. I'm getting ready to kick some butt in the supply department. I mean, when you look at this, two weeks ago I ordered some rectal thermometers. Look what they sent me. That's what Mr. Kresge in 304 said. <laughs> Listen, if you're free this afternoon, let's go down to supply and show those guys why these won't work. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm late.
at everybody, but I'm lucky to be here at all. Annie, what happened? Well, last night, Fred and I were driving home from a PTA meeting behind one of those big rig trucks. You know, the kind of speed along and change lanes without looking. And have those shiny, silver, big-breasted women on the mud flats? <laughs> we almost died. Yeah, there's something. Well, anyhow, Fred lost control of the car, and we ended up doing a rollover into an embankment. Good Lord, the truck cut you off? No, Fred was looking at those mud flaps. Well, I'm just glad you're all right. Me too, but it got us to thinking. Life is so fragile. If Fred and I were to die, who would take care of the kids? Annie, don't say that. Honey, that was a rhetorical question. You'll be taking care of the kids. <laughs> What are you talking about? I thought you named your sister guardian. I did, but Brenda and her husband are getting transferred to California. My folks are getting on in years, and my other sister Claudia is getting it on with anything wearing pants. Really? You know, I gotta start wearing those when I go out. Annie, look, there's another thing. I mean, in case you hadn't thought about it, your kids are, well, black. <gasps> they are. Then you know what I mean. They need to know who they are and where they came from. How are they going to deal with being brought up by a mother who's white? I still have the scars. <laughs> oh, Annie, I don't know if I could raise three kids. I mean, I've never even babysat. Okay, I'll tell you what. We'll break you in slowly. Try one kid for one night. Zach can come over and spend Saturday night with you. Oh, I don't know. Oh, you'll be fine. Don't worry. Okay, you're on. Call me Mommy. I'd pay to. <laughs> Just looking at the bulletin board downstairs. Guess who's loose? I heard. Annie's sister. <laughs> no, Jim the crazy guy. It's no big deal. He always wanders off. I always find him, bring him back. Greg would be much more of a challenge. <laughs> Let me take Greg to sight. Paco, you could never do that without the signatures of three doctors. Give me half an hour. Oh, thanks, Carrie. I'll, I'll let you know tomorrow. You're sweet for calling. No, you're sweet. No, you are. No, you are. <laughs> Bitch. Julie, I'm sorry. It's my friend Carrie. She's having another dinner party, and she wants to know if I'm bringing anyone. She knows I'm not bringing anyone. She's just calling to rub it in. Oh, I hate that. People who are supposedly your friends, assuming you're alone. Assuming you could never in a million years find someone to bring. Hey, maybe I will bring someone. You? Oh, please. Who? <laughs> His name is Dr. Robinson. He's handsome and intelligent. I met him in the medical library. He offered me a lifesaver. And as I took it from his tweezers, I knew he was the man for me. <laughs> well, Miss Dr. Robinson sounds perfect. Why don't you ask him to the dinner party? Oh, Cheetah. Girls just don't do that. Oh, please, these are the 90s. You can do it, Julie. It's in your power. Do you really think so? Yes. Today, women are free. Women are equal. Excuse me. Good morning. Oh, Dr. Robinson, you're here. I was getting worried you were too busy for breakfast. Ah, sorry I'm late. I had to run 20 drug tests this morning. God, I hate football season. Although, I did get to meet the number one ball handler in Miami. Dan Marino? No, Nurse Stiggs. I'm glad you made it. I wouldn't miss it. You're very special to me, Julie. I like you, too. How about this table? Not close enough to the emergency exit. Ah, good eye. How about the one we had yesterday? It's not under any ceiling fixtures that could fall on us, and it's line of sight to the Heimlich chart. Perfect. <laughs> to your help. What have you heard? <laughs> You need someone there to be strong. 
his needs, my lord and master. <laughs> and here? And right here. Congratulations, Sandy. If anything happens to me, you are the mother of three children. Wow, and I didn't even get stretch marks. <laughs> or the special joy of sleeping with Fred. Speaking of Fred, what if just you die? Do I get Fred? Honey, you can have him now. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, you bet. Uh, excuse me, is that a Claire, the only thing you're gonna have for lunch? No, it's dessert. I had a good lunch. What'd you have? Something called cheese pals. <laughs> excuse me, but is this the kind of food that you would serve others in your home? Like, uh, I don't know, say, uh, your three adopted godchildren? <laughs> Frankly, I think they'll be thankful for anything they get. Chained to the water heater down in the basement. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess I had that coming. Fact is, Fred and I are thrilled that you're agreeing to do this. And we both know that you're going to be a great mother. Damn right I will. Uh, excuse me, did I just hear you use the D word? Well, what the hell is a D word? Excuse me, are you going to talk like that around my kids? Excuse me, is this the lady who told me the joke about the shepherd, the monkey, and the bag full of hair? No, wait, Sandy, it's just that I'm noticing some patterns that concern me. Bad eating habits, indiscriminate language, and a tendency to use a little too much makeup. You think I wear too much makeup? Well, let's just say you're not going to burn up on re-entry. So what you're saying here is you think I'm a bad example. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. Honey, you're slouching. Oh. No, Sandy, I Now, just... listen, Annie, I'm not going to stand here and be on trial. If you want me to be godmother, 